Last Thursday, me, Tess, and Tanner packed up in my dually in the two-car enclosed trailer with the Falcon and the Malibu loaded down inside. We're headed to Orlando for a no-prep race, but unfortunately, my two four-legged associates are going to have to stay at home. I said goodbye to Scrappy in June and goodbye to Vicky, and then it was time to double and triple check our do not forget list before we hit the road. Surprisingly, we managed to leave an hour before schedule and head straight down to the Flying J to top off our fuel tanks and pick up a few snacks before we hit the road and begin our journey to Florida. So we're all filled up, we got the cars loaded, the camera equipment, and we're headed to Florida. But we're not really sure where because Billy hasn't yet gotten us an Airbnb. I guess we've got two days to figure that out. Well, they have tonight. Oh, yeah, they're flying now, <laughs> so they need to get on that, I guess. <laughs> Typically, it takes two hours to fly, but a little longer to drive. 14 hours and six minutes with a flood warning. 15 hours, two minutes avoids the flood warning. What do you say, Steve? It just says warning, so there's not actually a flood. We finna get wet. So right after noon, we pulled out of the Flying J and headed down 33 south to 77, where we would cross the Ohio River at Ravenswood, West Virginia. When we left, it was 70 degrees and sunny, but just a few hours later, the skies would darken and tornadoes would ravage Ohio. Thankfully, we got out of town just in time, but the kids weren't so lucky. As we start down 77 on the West Virginia Turnpike, we find out that the tornadoes and the weather back home have gotten terrible and the kid's flight is gonna be delayed this evening if it gets off the ground at all. At this point, we had no idea that we would actually make it to Florida before the kids would, even with all the fuel stops, which will typically add two to three hours of travel time, depending on how long the lines are, at the truck stops to get fuel. And as it turns out, our first fuel stop in Virginia was a lengthy one. Of course, I don't think it helped that Tess causes traffic jams wherever she goes. Eventually, we got our fuel tanks filled and Tess got the windshield cleaned up and we got back on 77 to head further south through the tunnels of the Blue Ridge Mountains and finally down the big hill at Fancy Gap just before crossing the state line into North Carolina. By this time, Tanner had taken over driving duties, and Tess and I both noticed that Tanner tends to drive like your typical Mopar enthusiast. Oh, there they go. Look, they're your people. They're your people, Steve. I don't claim them. What? I don't claim them. But they got hammies. Got hammy in it. Tanner happens to be a very aggressive driver and has very little patience. So on the next fuel stop, the last thing Tanner was interested in was getting trapped in a long line at the diesel pumps behind a bunch of semis. Instead, he decided to try his luck at the RV pump, which was a little difficult to get into. And it just so happens there wasn't a line at the semi pumps at all. And Tess isn't one to let something like this go unnoticed. In fact, she and Tanner argue and bicker back and forth like brother and sister. You all right, Stevie? I, I parked a little far away. <laughs> After that fuel stop around sunset, we got back on the highway and headed down to Columbia, South Carolina, where we had planned to stop and get something to eat. But unfortunately, not everything that's advertised is available. Hey, Steve, when they come out to ask for your order, tell them, we want them. You're really gonna get me in trouble. I'm gonna get the Hooter Aid. You're gonna get the Hooter Aid? <laughs> it didn't take long for us to realize there weren't any Hooters at Hooters. Stevie, what? explain what happened here. There are no Hooters in Hooters. I made a terrible decision. Well, I didn't really make a decision. I just said, there's a Hooters up here before I saw the Outback sign. And everybody's like, let's go to Hooters. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What, everybody? Yeah. Everybody. Uh, everybody. I'm okay with Hooters. So we were headed to Outback and we saw the Hooters sign and everybody got excited for Hooters. I was excited. I'm sorry. What do you want to do? The only set of Hooters was already in the truck with us, I guess. <laughs> It's always disheartening to go into a place like Hooters and not find any good looking girls. The talent over there was lacking, wasn't it? Whose idea was Hooters anyways? That was terrible. I just pointed it out and you guys were like, oh, let's go. No, we were both like, oh, I don't know about that. And you were like, yeah, let's go to Hooters. You really want my girlfriend to not be with me when I go home, huh? <laughs> so anyway, we walked next door to Outback and got a pretty good meal over there before we got back in the truck and trailer to head a little farther south. We had made it all the way down into Georgia in just over 13 hours, even with our stops for fuel and to get dinner. We decided to stop for the night and get some rest and then get up the next morning and get back on the road. Of course, we ended up sleeping in a little bit too late to pick up breakfast there at the hotel, so we went ahead and packed up our stuff and got in the truck and started looking for some place to get breakfast on our own. How was your night? Did you sleep good? 
How are you, Steve-O? Did you sleep good? Good. I slept pretty good. We gotta find some place to go eat breakfast. Gotta get Bill and his, uh, his fruit and kind of cheese and what? granola. All right, so we stopped and got some breakfast. And now we are headed where? We gotta go to wherever Billy's Nova is. I've got the address, I'll punch Florida, you in. Somewhere. So the kids were dropped off at the airport last night around, I don't know, I don't know what time. They sat in the airport and waited and waited and waited and then they finally canceled their flight and now they're not flying out till today. Today is what, Friday? <clears throat> they're not flying out till six o'clock tonight out of Port Columbus because of the storms and the bad weather that they had last night. So we now need to head directly to where Billy's Nova is. It's stored in a garage down here in Florida. And we got change oil and swap tires on it and get it ready because they're not gonna be here until later this evening. You can tell by the look on Tanner's face, he already knows what's coming. Since Billy's not gonna be there in time, he knows he's gonna be the one having to change tires and oil in Billy's Nova this evening down in Florida in a garage he's never set foot in with God only knows what tools and what if any supplies are available to him when he gets there. So now obviously time is of the essence because we need to get down there and get this car serviced so that we'll have plenty of time to get to the Airbnb, unpack, get showers and get dinner. And with a little luck, a decent night's sleep so that we can get up first thing in the morning and be at Orlando for the driver's meeting at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, our last fuel stop added a considerable amount of time and ultimately would delay our arrival time to the shop where Billy's Nova is located. As we were coming down 95, Tess saw the Bucky sign and was really excited to stop. And since we needed fuel anyway, we made the mistake of trying to get in there during a time when Tanner's patients were at an all-time low. Steve, how you doing, buddy? Bucky's first experience is great. You like Bucky's? No. You like going to Bucky's? No. You like getting fuel at Bucky's? Nope. You like trying to get into Bucky's? Nope. You like trying to get out of Bucky's? I'm, no, I'm not excited for that. Steve's about to lose his shit completely. <laughs> this is a totally different Bucky's experience than I'm, I'm used to. I'm completely calm right now. I just, I'm getting into the gas station. This is an epic disaster. Whose idea uh, was this? The one behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say let's go to Bucky's. I just saw the sign that said Bucky's and I said, oh look, there's a Bucky. Did I say, let's go through all this? Did I say, let's let's pull a 500 foot long trailer through 12,000 cars of traffic? No. This is insanity. This is literally the definition of gas station hell. This is the busiest Bucky's I have ever seen in my life. I've never seen a Bucky's this busy. This is literally gas station hell. This is terrible. It took us almost a half an hour just to get into the parking lot, and then once we were in there, we couldn't get fuel even if we wanted to, so we couldn't get out of there fast enough. It's even stupider than we are. <laughs> <laughs> While someone else may have fallen into the same trap we did, our problems with fuel stops for the day were far from over. In fact, at this point, we're gonna be doing good just to get out of Bucky's without getting in an accident. Oh my Lord. Oh my gosh. Curb. Oh yeah, all of it. You're almost on the sidewalk. While we did manage to get out of Bucky's without an accident, our next stop at the racetrack station would prove to be even more difficult, albeit without as much traffic. What'd you get? The swing of the trailer's This is why I typically try to just go to truck stops to get fuel. And if I do have to go to a normal gas station, I'll try and catch a diesel pump out on the end of the island instead of the center where all the congestion is and traffic. So there's a lesser risk of us bumping into somebody else or somebody else bumping into us. Somehow Tess managed to stop traffic for us and got a free coffee. And I decided maybe it's time for me to get back behind the wheel and get us out of here. It did require some evasive action and a little U-turn in the middle of the road. But outside of a small scratch on the side of the trailer, we made it through this unscathed. Approximately 45 minutes later, we arrived at the destination where Billy's Nova's kept. We made it. Yep, we made it. After arriving on scene, it was time to go inspect the garage and find out what, if anything, is in here to work with. This shop and tools belong to a friend of ours that owns the Orange Nova that I've been working on back at home. Josh definitely has some nice cars 
and he most certainly knows exactly how to take care of them. Anyway, Tess took over filming, and I went outside to make some phone calls while Tanner took over working in the shop, getting ready to swap tires on Billy's car and change the oil. Thankfully, Josh's shop is nothing like we have back at home, and it's nice and tidy and all the tools are put away where they belong. So Tanner didn't have too much trouble putting tires on and changing the oil. But as usual, anything having to do with Billy is never easy, and he never makes it easy on us. How's it going, Stevie? It's going. It's going? Yep. We just don't have an oil filter. Well, you know, when Billy says everything is there to do everything to the car, I walk in, there's oil, and he got a five gallon drum of oil, which made it very hard to try and guess how much is 12 quarts in here. But oh really my guess. God. <laughs> <laughs> You're having a rough day, Stevie. <laughs> so we had to use an old VR1 jug and dump it in the jug and figure out how much five quarts was here, put five quarts in it, and then filled it up again, put another five in it, and I was like, oh, it only takes like nine and a half because you know we're using a used oil filter. So I put another like one and a half or two of these in here. So there's like 12 to 12 and a half in it right now. With the work on the Nova now complete, it's time for us to unload the Malibu out of the trailer so we can drive it from the shop over to the Airbnb. Now, the place that we plan on staying at is only about 30 minutes away from the shop. And initially, I had planned on taking the truck and trailer over there. But according to the images I found on Google Earth, the address that Billy sent me for the Airbnb doesn't appear to have enough room to park a truck and trailer in the driveway. Why are you looking at me? At about the same time I'm figuring out the logistics of this nightmare, we arrived at the Airbnb and the kid's flight was just about to land in Florida. As it turns out, Tanner's mom and his stepdad live in Florida and drove up from Naples to visit for a little while while we're in town. But since they have a four and a half hour drive home and have to work tomorrow, they followed us back to the Airbnb to say goodbye to Tanner before they head back home and we head out to dinner. Tanner was filthy dirty from working on Billy's Nova, so he wanted to take a shower while Tess and I worked on editing and sharing clips from the trip down. And then just after dark, we headed into town to get dinner. As we're driving up the road, I happen to notice the odometer on the Malibu. On the way to dinner, the car turned 40,000 miles. But little did I know at the time, the car would have over 41,000 miles on it by the time we got home. Anyway, this brings us to Saturday morning, and it's officially race day, and it's time for us all to hop in the Malibu Hello? and head to Orlando. The boys are each racing in small tire today, and I intend to put the Malibu in a class called Baby Street. The class is intended for real deal, daily drivable street cars. The class has some pretty typical rules to keep full-blown race cars out, and there's also a mandatory cruise that we need to line up for in the staging lanes and head out for right after the driver's meeting with all the other cars in the class. You're so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, so we are in the staging lanes. They're gonna have driver's meeting and then we have to go on the cruise for the class that we're in. And I hope that I'm headed the right direction. I assume that I'm headed the right direction. They didn't specify. They did not specify. And this is like the normal direction for yeah. staging lane. Yeah. Well, so, that guy's doing it too, so we must yeah. be right. Tess and I went up and took part in the driver's meeting, and then it was time to get in the cars and head out for the cruise. Now, sometimes the cruises are pretty elaborate and lengthy, but this one was just down the highway about 15 or 20 miles, and we turned around and came right back to the track. Initially, when we left the track, Tess and I were the first car in the cruise line, but we pulled over into the left-hand lane and slowed down so that we could get video of all the other cars that were partaking in the cruise as well. A total of, I believe, 19 cars. Where old-school carbureted small block and big block muscle cars were well represented, as well as late model fuel injected, boosted and nitrous cars and imports as well. After the cruise was over, we all met back at the track and went directly to the staging lanes where we had to ready our cars and be prepared for first round without adding fuel or going back to the pits for any reason. I turned off the air conditioning in the Malibu so that we didn't drip any water on the track, brought the bottle pressure up and the tire pressures down, and got ready to head out to the burnout box for first round of eliminations.
After the burnout, I backed up in my tracks, turned the nitrous system on, and purged the bottle down. By all indications, the Malibu was ready to go. But, unfortunately, it wasn't. You got money, though. <laughs> I don't. The tune-up in the Malibu should have resulted in about a 135 60 foot, and I would have had both kits on at about 300 feet. But unfortunately, the nitrous kit didn't shoot any nitrous, only fuel and pulled time. No <laughs> Seems to be a common theme. I was really hoping it was just something easy and like too much fuel, too much weight, too much track prep and just... No, no, it left. And I knew as soon as it left, I could feel the nitrous start to come in. And the more the nitrous came in, the slower it got. And when the second stage came on, it just started popping and cracking and I let out of it. Yeah. So it was spraying gas and no nitrous. Fun. So I'll take it home. We'll take it home. We'll take it apart and find out what's wrong with it. But unfortunately, uh, it sucks come all this way. And have a problem with wiring or something. I, I don't know. Gremlins. So unfortunately, I'm out first round, but I turned my attention to help taking care of the kids, McDonald's run, keeping everybody fed, and helping the kids film for their channel. The Falcon was having some problems with the throttle linkage, as well as some massive oil leaks. The Nova, on the other hand, started the day off very strong and technically the car made it to the final round, but ultimately fell victim to a reoccurring oiling system problem that's plagued the engine from day one. Right after the pass, Billy sent me a text message that he was gonna need towed back to his pit area. At some point during its last pass, the Nova lost oil pressure and spun a rod or a main bearing. And shortly thereafter, Tommy spun on his own oil due to an oil leak in the Falcon. So that pretty much ended our weekend of racing. And then we found ourselves in a position to have three cars that needed to come home and only two spots in the trailer. Which means one of our three cars is going to have to make its way back to Ohio under its own power. So you guys are going to fly home. And your biggest concern right now is what's going to happen to the basketball if you have to fly home and you can't send the basketball home well, with pretty, us. I'm pretty sure we're allowed to have it on the plane, so okay. okay. So crises averted. But if not, I'll have to buy paint every basketball. Meanwhile, we're trying to figure out an app that we can find E85 to get home. Dude, if your car was a real street car on pump gas, then you don't have to worry about it. It's alternative fuel, you know? He's trying to be good to the environment. They really should have more E85 in the world. The other situation is we got to get that truck and trailer back out onto the road without damaging it, causing an accident, or Steve losing his shit. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna do great. It's gonna be fantastic. He's gonna back that thing out like a professional, like you and a drum. Do you remember when I mentioned that I checked Google Earth and there really wasn't any place for this trailer at the Airbnb? Well, I told the kids that too, but they drove it back to the house and parked it along the side of this little driveway, but there's really nowhere for us to turn it around. So Billy assessed the situation and came up with a plan to use this old abandoned entrance through the woods. Maybe kick it in four wheel drive, just in case. So I relayed this plan of action to Tanner, who's driving the truck. We have a plan. What's the plan? You're gonna back up and drive up towards that house and there's another exit that goes out through the woods. Through the woods? Steve now finds himself in the predicament that I always found myself in when I was dealing with Billy on a regular basis, especially when it comes to traveling. This is Billy's idea, by the way. Your idea. Oh no, it was Billy's idea. Unfortunately, or maybe thankfully, Tanner couldn't get the truck and trailer up in the driveway. I can't watch this. I'm just gonna go get in the Malibu and pray. I've come to the conclusion it's much easier on my blood pressure and my stress level if I just sit back and watch. But in this particular scenario, I couldn't even watch. I let Tess film it and I sat back in the Malibu and prayed that my truck and Billy's trailer along with the two race cars inside would survive the fiasco without getting plowed into out on the street. And I have to admit there was a certain level of concern for the Malibu 
as it's going to have to drive 950 miles all the way back to Ohio on E85. Are you as excited as I am for our adventure? <laughs> very excited. I'm excited. We are starting off an adventure right now. The main agenda on the list right now is I want to see a Florida beach. Yes. So that's going to happen. Second agenda is Bill is dropping off an engine. His favorite engine in the whole wide world, the LS. Yeah, the Junkyard Dog 5.3, the Uncle Bob and I. So we're off. Our journey has officially begun. And stop number one is Daytona Beach. I made a promise to Tess that if she agreed to come along on this trip and help me film, that I would make sure she got to sink her toes in the sand at Daytona Beach. We found a Walmart a couple of miles from the beachfront and dropped the truck and trailer off so Steve could ride the Malibu with us. After that, we made a beeline for Atlantic Avenue and found a spot to pull off and park the Malibu and let Tess out of the car so she can go out and see the beach. Is this better than the Cali beaches? So much better. The next phase of our journey is to drop that 5.3 LS motor off up at the Winter's house about an hour away from Daytona Beach. So we decided we'd go uptown and get something to eat before we head out on the road again to drop the engine off. Tanner picked this little karaoke bar that's NASCAR themed right off Atlantic Avenue. It was a neat little place with lots of cool autographs on the ceiling. We went in, sat down, had something to eat, and then it was time to head back towards the car, which we had parked about two or three blocks away. We did a little window shopping on the way back to the car, but Tess just didn't seem too interested in the things that we pointed out. About an hour or so later, we made it back to Walmart, picked up the truck and trailer, and started making our way up towards the winner's house of Uncle Bob's 5.3 Junkyard Dog Engine giveaway and drop it off at its new owner's house. You're doing my job. They don't cause as many traffic jams when I do it, though. Aw, <laughs> wait, there's nobody even around. I can do it. Well, you try it and see what happens. <laughs> We made it. Let's we'll see if we can figure out a way to get this engine unloaded. <laughs> or a place to park the truck and trailer. Yeah. After taking a few minutes for everybody to get acquainted, we got busy unhooking the trailer from the truck and then back the truck up in the driveway so we can use the cherry picker to lift the engine off and set it on the garage floor. Once that was done, all we had to do was hook the truck back to the trailer and bada bing, bada boom, we're in business. And although the guy that won this engine's into Fords, he still wanted to check out my Malibu while it was sitting out here in front of his house. It's probably, it's, it's a little dirty. A little dirty, I could eat off of that thing. <laughs> it's a neat old car. Yes, it is. Definitely, definitely, uh, but she's definitely fun to drive it, let alone just watching it from a thousand miles away. I'm like, man, that's a badass. <laughs> Park just down the road. We got about, so we got 900 miles We're, left. We're 50 80 miles. miles. We, have, we drove 80 miles? Yeah. 80? It was 80 from Daytona Beach to here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roughly to the Georgia line, you guys are probably just shot now. 
Oh, that's not too bad. Hmm. Definitely well, we'll see how far we can make it tonight, and then we'll get a hotel and get up tomorrow and hit the road again. Where are you going to stop? I'm not sure. Depends on where we run out of fuel. Oh, don't <laughs> say that. Factor. Or break down, I hope not. But. Shh. <laughs> Might have to stop it. one of them tires and strap it to the right. front of the yeah, truck so one. I can push you guys. Go ahead, take one. I'll give one of you. There's no room between the front of that truck and the cars that you drive behind. I'm How are you supposed to push us? I'm going to put the front of the, the tire on the front of the truck and then I can just put it on the bumper. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It. There's no room for a holder car between you and the cars that you drive behind. <laughs> I guess you're going to do a front end on the tailgate. <laughs> <tailgated. laughs> he made Tess nervous all the way down here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, thanks again, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. It's Thank you. awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for all you guys do for Racing Community. It's great.
What'd you say when you heard me pull in with that thing? I thought that was an LS. I ain't gonna lie. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. I thought that was an LS. But... That's a hydraulic roller, small block Chevrolet with a carburetor. Come on. Hey, listen, I ain't gonna lie. Some bad boys right there. <laughs>